So the picture that you see here in the background is uh, from this uh, small little microscope here. It's called the Matchbox uh, microscope, uh, Matchbox scope. And uh, yes, uh, today I'm going to put it together and uh, we're going to have a closer look at it. And uh, I would of course uh, have to say first of all, hello and welcome Microbe Hunter here. Um, you can see that this little Matchbox scope is not uh, directly connected to the computer, um, but the picture, the image is sent wirelessly um, over Wi-Fi to the computer and it's uh, basically the screen that you see behind me and you can also see that there is a menu there so I can uh, make uh, basic adjustments like uh, exposure time or um, uh, gain and, and, and br uh, brightness because there's a built-in LED here. So all of these things can be controlled directly over the web browser and uh, um, this uh, ma a Matchbox scope is uh, quite nice because it is not only 3D printed so therefore if you have a 3D printer you can make it yourself uh, but also the electronics, the parts are very cheap cheap and can be readily uh, bought online um, and this basically means that uh, making one of these uh, things is uh, really uh, quite uh, cost effective and therefore I think it's a very nice project also um, if you're working for example with children or with students or if you're a little bit technically inclined if you would like to experiment around with it. Yeah and of course uh, the camera can also be programmed uh, and there are many things that you can experiment with it. Yeah and uh, what I'm going to do first is, is I'm going to uh, first of all uh, put it together um, and uh, then we're going to have a look at um, a few pictures uh, um, that I made uh, using uh, this uh, little microscope here. Well this here is uh, the focusing mechanism it's uh, by turning a screw with a supplied a little wrench and uh, there are instead of springs in this case uh, there are magnets powerful neodymium magnets that push uh, the stage uh, stage upwards. This is the heart um, of the whole system it is the ESP32 CAM module and uh, also a USB programming board yeah, it has to be put together um, first. And yeah, there was a kit, by the way, and uh, I'm now going to assemble the kit. Now, the module itself uh, is uh, self-contained. All you have to do is you have to attach a power supply and then you're ready to go. So, and this here is uh, the 3D printed uh, kit. Um, yeah, and uh, let's have a look at the parts first. Of course, the different colors to choose from. This one here is pink. Um, and uh, there are also several screws. Uh, the tool is provided as well. Of course, the strong magnets and it looks all very nice um, and well thought through. The first thing that you have to do is, is you have to remove uh, the lens, uh, the, uh, the objective uh, from the camera and you have to mount it uh, on the 3D printed part here. And by increasing the distance uh, of uh, the lens uh, to the sensor, this uh, increases the magnification. So, and here this is a spacer that, which uh, protects uh, the cable um, so that it does not uh, get uh, squeezed uh, too hard. So, um, yeah, let's uh, put it in first. And uh, then basically um, all you have to do is you have to uh, connect uh, the top part using the screws and that's pretty much it. No gluing required um, and uh, everything can be assembled with assembled within a few minutes here. So this is now the stage um, and then of course uh, there are the magnets here. And I think I found it easier to first uh, connect the stage using the screws and then later on to uh, to insert the magnets. Yeah and uh, here again I'm connecting the screws here and then I'm trying to attach uh, the magnets simply by uh, pushing them into, into the proper space and they stay in there put uh, all on their own. So uh, now uh, here this is a very interesting one. This is uh, the light uh, the, for the lamp. Um, so the lamp, uh, the LED is on the bottom but uh, this part redirects the light so that it comes from the top. I'm plug plugging in the USB power supply and then it's going to boot up um, and this takes a couple of seconds and uh, after it's booting up uh, it's going to establish a wireless connection. So now I'm on my computer, I have to choose uh, the correct camera here and I'm connecting it and uh, after a few seconds I've established a Wi-Fi connection. It says here no internet and open, there is no need to insert uh, or to type in a password. So this is the, yeah, in the properties I can find the IP um, address and when you type it in into a web browser then you can already access the camera. And here that's basically the image from the camera and uh, that is already one of my slides that I um, put on the stage and uh, you can make all sorts of adjustments here. You can of course uh, change the resolution around, you can change uh, the light intensity, the gain um, and a variety of other parameters. Yeah and uh, I'm just going to leave it at that here and uh, I've uh, already focused a little bit uh, beforehand so the image is yeah now basically the sharpest that I can get it. Now um, it is not a microscope objective so one should not be surprised that the image is not uh, entirely uh, 
crisp and in focus, but that is to be expected in any case. And I still have to say that I'm quite positively surprised by the uh, quality that such a cheaper little uh, microscope is um, able to provide. So yeah, that's, uh, by the way, the cross-section of a, of a plant, yeah, a commercially prepared slide. Yeah, I'm going to copy the image um, and uh, I copied, pasted it into a um, image editing program. I increased the contrast a little bit and uh, this is basically, yeah, what I got here. Yeah, so we can see the individual cells, and I think that for for simple investigations, um, this is a, a quite a quite a nice little uh, project uh, that you uh, can engage in with uh, students, for example, or children. Yeah, yeah, this is a butterfly wing. You can see the individual scales. And uh, what's the next one here? Ah, yeah. That's, uh, again, the surface of a plant. You can see the individual stomates and the cells and uh, also, of course, uh, the stained nuclei. And again, a cross-section of, of the stem um, of a plant here. Yeah, let's have a look um, also um, at an insect. Uh, that's uh, the head of a fly. And uh, there is a bit of chromatic aberration there, but that's uh, I guess that's okay. That's to be expected as well. Here's some pollen grains, um, also a commercial slide. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go back again. Now, the Matchbox Scopa was sent to me by the organization, by those people who were actually, who actually developed it, uh, because it has, as a matter of fact, is also used in research. Um, it is uh, used, it can be used also for microfluidic measurements. And uh, I have to hold the slide a little bit so that you're able to see actually <laughs> the fly leg. Yeah. Uh, but I think it, I'm just going to put it down. Um, and, uh, yes, uh, it can also be used for real research. It is used for real research. And I think that uh, those cheap microscopes not are not only a very nice project uh, to be done with uh, students and uh, children maybe who are technically inclined, but uh, can also be used for citizen science projects to do basic uh, investigations and maybe um, yeah, as a very easy and cheaper way to get people interested uh, in microscopy uh, as well. Well, for me, that's all that I would like uh, to say today. Um, I wish you all the best. I wish you happy micro hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.